Tesla Shanghai has reported 66,000 vehicles deliveries in Q1 of 2023, making it a record for Shanghai. Sheesh! Although we knew that Tesla Shanghai would have done a record in Q1, I was a bit skeptical and I'll tell you why. You see, China had a lunar holiday their Chinese New Year, and it was in January for about a week. Tesla had about nine days off for employees. That's nine days of no production. But yet, they still did a record deliveries. That's crazy. And although we don't have how much they produced, deliveries 66,000, they probably produced in the mid 70s, which is an absolute record for Tesla. Crazy. Now, what does this mean for Q1? Well, we got February and March to go through, but you know, January was a crazy good month for Tesla Shanghai. Most likely it's gonna be a very crazy month for February and March. So in this video, we're gonna go ahead and estimate and guess, predict intelligently what Shanghai, Berlin, Austin, Fremont, how much they're gonna produce and deliver for the entire quarter one. And as well as trying to see what the stock price could potentially be in Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4, just the regular thing like we do on this channel. So if you guys are interested in that, why isn't that subscribe button smashed? In fact, why isn't that like button smash, man? Come on, man. Smash that like button, hit subscribe if you haven't already. Let's get down to it. By the way, guys, this is only a prediction and a prediction alone. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just a guy on YouTube who loves Tesla and is pretty much going all in into Tesla stock. So. Let's get down to it, starting off with Shanghai in this lovely chart. As you guys can see, in January, they did about over 66,000 in deliveries. And because we don't know how much they produced, I just made a separate tab calling it delivered, which is 66,000, because we can't really deduct from deliveries when it's already been delivered, because that wouldn't make sense. Moving on to February. Now in February, there's only 28 days. So we already know that it's going to be limited in this month. However, though, if we look at January, they did 66,000 deliveries. Let's calculate deliveries alone. Tesla Shanghai, the factory was off nine days. So most likely those nine days, it was closed and there was no production. But nonetheless, subtracting nine days from 31 days, that's 22 days. So let's go ahead and subtract 66,051 vehicles deliveries by 22 days. And we get over 3,000 vehicles I guess you could say produced every single day, but these are deliveries. So there was over 3,000 deliveries, but most likely there was stock from December, about like maybe 20, 30,000 vehicles. So it was probably most likely taken from then as well. So it's hard to see what the production was and they haven't released what the production numbers were. If they did, please comment down below. I'd love to know. But 3,000 vehicles deliveries every single day in January, which is absolutely insane. But for February, what I did was I put 2,900 vehicles being produced daily for 28 days and we get over 81,000 vehicles. Same thing in March, but that's 31 days and we get almost 90,000 vehicles being produced, which that would mean in Q1 of 2023 for Shanghai, excluding January, that's over 171,000 vehicles produced. I mean, that's insane. Comment down below if you agree. Now moving on to Fremont. Now the thing with Fremont is that they're limited in growth because they have such a limited and a weird factory going on. I mean, what can I say? They they bought that factory from GM, so <laughs> what can I really say there? But for January, I'm saying that 1,700 vehicles being produced daily, and that's pretty much what they do on a daily basis, about 1,700 vehicles. And this includes the X, the Y, the 3, and the S. And if we do 1,700 multiplied by 29 days, because there is two days public holidays in the US, so track two days from 31 days, that's 29 days, that's about over 49,000 vehicles being produced. Same thing in February. I don't think there's any holidays there. Comment down below if there is any holidays in February in the US, but I left it here as if there's not. 28 days multiplied 1700. That's almost 48,000 vehicles being produced. And in March, there is one day holiday in March, making it 30 days. And multiply that by 1700, we get 51,000 vehicles being produced. And we get a Q1, total Q1 for Fremont of almost 148,000 vehicles being produced. Sheesh moment, that's pretty darn good. That's pretty much almost max capacity for Fremont. So, sheesh. Now moving on to Berlin, in December, they announced 3,000 vehicles being produced weekly. Right now we're in February, so most likely they're edging close to the 4,000s. Maybe, maybe by the time this video comes out, they already declared it, I don't know. But to be conservative, I said for January, they're gonna do about 3,300 around that age on a weekly basis in January, which would be around 475 vehicles daily. Now, shout out to Colin McKenzie. Thank you so much for telling me the official public holidays for Berlin. But apparently there is one day holiday for Berlin in January and that's the New Year's Eve. So I reduced one day to 30 days and 
475 multiplied by 30 days, we get 14, over 14,000 vehicles being produced. In February, I said they're gonna produce 3,500 vehicles on the weekly, which would be around 500 vehicles daily, multiply that by 28 days, because there's no holidays for Berlin. In February, we get 14,000 vehicles. In March, I'm guessing about 3,600 vehicles being produced. I know I'm keeping more of, uh, very conservative on these numbers. It could be closer by March, most likely in the 4,000s weekly, but I'm just keeping it very conservative. 3,600 vehicles on a weekly, which would be daily of 525 vehicles produced. Multiply that by 31 days, we get over 16,000 vehicles. Overall for Q1, Berlin could be producing almost 44,500 vehicles which is absolutely insane. Now moving on to Texas, they also did 3,000 vehicles weekly. And in my opinion, Texas is going to outperform or overtake Berlin in production because it's just a massive facility, man. But nonetheless, I said the same thing for Berlin here as well. About 3,300 vehicles being produced on the weekly, which would be 475. There's three day holiday in Texas apparently. So we're gonna slash three days off that from 31 days to 28 days. Then we get over 13,000 vehicles being produced. Same thing as Berlin, about 500 vehicles vehicles daily we get 28 days that's about 14,000 vehicles being produced daily as well and in March I didn't change anything because Texas is very slow for some flipping reason but hopefully in March it could be 550 vehicles daily but I kept it the same as February at around 500 slashing two days off instead of three because it's two days holidays in Texas which will be over 14,000 vehicles being produced overall Texas most likely will do about 42,000 vehicles production in the first quarter of this year, which is actually really good. It's a 2X from last quarter, so that's good stuff. Total production, excluding the 66,000 deliveries from Shanghai, is over 405,000 vehicles produced. Give that a 90% delivery rate, that's almost 365,000 vehicles being delivered. And then add the 66,000 to this number, and we get almost 431,000 vehicles being delivered in Q1, which but it's actually not bad, it's actually pretty darn good. Now it could be more than this if Shanghai goes full capacity like we calculated for January to 3,000, probably even more than that, but keeping things very conservative. Now, if you guys are ready to see what the stock price could be this quarter, then uh, why isn't that like button smash then? Come on, man. Let's go. So here is the chart that I use to predict on the quarterly basis for a Tesla stock. And as you guys can see, if you guys are a regular viewer of mine, well then, things have changed for the better. What I added here was the credits, energy, insurance, and some expenses here, like the currency expense, because that, that, that takes a lot from the net income and does affect the EPS a lot. So I'm like, you know what? Might as well just add that in as well. Average vehicle sold for all the Q4s, except for the last Q4, but Q1, Q2, Q3, I put it at 50,000 because we did have a 10% price cut. The credits here, I put 400 for Q1, 350 for Q2, 300 and 250 for the rest of the quarters now apparently i didn't know this thank you karaf shout out to you my man but apparently all this is 100 percent profits so this is that's nice i didn't know that i thought it just added on to the revenue and maybe it's like 10 percent, 12 percent profit but it's apparently 100 percent profit so that's actually pretty that's good to know tesla energy here i put 1.5 billion with a 12 percent profits from that which is about 180 million insurance 325 million and although we don't know what the profits of this is it is becoming significant enough just to add this to the revenue. Now, as you guys can see for the insurance and energy here, I did increase it here for Q2, Q3, and Q4, as you guys can see. Then we get the Q1 revenue and then the net income and then yada, 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 which you guys will see in a second as soon as we put the number in. So we said in Q1, they're gonna deliver about 430,844 vehicles and we put that number in and bam, look at all that number come in, man, I love it. If you guys wanna nerd out, you guys can pause the video and you know go roll by roll, but I'm gonna go straight to the Q1 revenue and net income.